fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. His faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. I am still there! When the westbound stage came into town, more than the usual number of people were on hand to meet it, because David Farnham was returning after 15 years in prison. Here, here it comes! David Farnham went away when his son Jim was only three. Now Jim was 18. He stood silently apart from the crowd that gathered, wondering what his father would look like. Oh, 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 oh. There's Dave Farnham. Just getting off. He sure looks pale and gaunt here. Dad, I'm here to meet you. Let me have that bag. You? You're? I'm Jim. My son. You are Jim. You... You look like your mother. Well, howdy, Farnham. Oh. <laughs> Seem good to be back. <laughs> How are you, Farnham? How do you treat you, huh? Boys, see you, Dave. boys please yeah. let me get my breath. Come with me, Dad. I've got a room down the street. The crowd drew back as Jim and David walked toward a boarding house. We'll go to my room where we can talk and sort of, sort of get acquainted. How'll that be, Dad? Fine, Jim, fine. You, you hardly know me. <laughs> I know more than you think. Mother told me how you'd been framed for that robbery. Your mother? I... I'd like to see where she's buried. I'll take you there after we've had a talk, huh? Then I want to call on Frank Tabor. Know him? Tabor? Oh, sure I know him. He's in the real estate business. He's the only true friend I have in Center City. He kept in touch with me all the time I was in prison. That afternoon found David Farnham and his son in the office of Frank Tabor. They were warmly welcomed. Then, after half an hour of talk, Tabor said... <clears throat> well, Dave, I, I suppose you and Jim will pull out of town. Leave Center City? Why? Well, to sort of start a new life. You know what I mean, Dave. People here know you as a... As a criminal. But I've paid in full, Frank. Dad wants to stay here, and so do I. Mom is buried here, Mr. Dear. Yes. yes, of course. Dave, I have a thousand dollars here. I set it aside for you. It'll just be a loan so you can make a payment on a ranch or a piece of farmland. Frank, and... is there any particular reason why I should leave Center City? Uh, well, yes, Dave. Yes, there is. 
You see, there's been a government detective around here for the past two days. Uh, His name is Brackett. What of it? Him in connection with the robbery for which your father went to prison. $40,000 of the stolen cash was never found. So the detective is here to watch me. Expecting I'll head for some secret hiding place and get that money. That's right. But Dad didn't steal (laughs) any money. Uh, Even Frank Tabor thinks I'm guilty. Now, Dave. Oh, it's all right, Frank. It's all right. I can't blame you for thinking that. You've been a good friend. Now, Jim, we'd better be going. Take this cash, Dave. Go ahead, take it. Just to show there's no hard feelings. You can repay me someday. Oh, very well, Frank. If you put it that way, I'll see that you get it back. And keep in touch with me, Dave. Let me know if there's anything I can do. Right. Goodbye for now. Goodbye, Mr. Tabor. Goodbye. As soon as his visitors had left, Frank Tabor pushed back from his desk, crossed the office, and opened a door to an adjoining room. I can hear the talk, Tabor. You couldn't get Farnham to leave town, could you? No, Randy, that poor fool. (laughs) Fool is right. He sure thinks you're a pal. We've got to do something. I don't like that government agent snooping around here. He might turn up something. Something like the truth, huh? Well... I wonder what Dave Farnham would say if he knew that you were the one who framed him for that robbery. Randy, that's never going to happen. I'll make sure it doesn't happen, and you'll have to help me. Ah. We'll start by spreading the word that Farnham is sore because that detective came here to watch him. Get the whole town talking about how sore Farnham is. Then what? Brackett gets shot and Farnham hangs for murder. Ah. Another frame of, huh? Yes. With Farnham dead, the government will probably give up all hope of getting back that 40,000. Now, get out of here and start spreading the word. No one knew who started the rumors, but within two days, everyone in town was talking about Dave Farnham's rage and indignation. Detective Brackett probably heard some of the talk, but he said nothing. On the third day after his return to Center City, Dave Farnham received a message asking him to come to Brackett's first floor room in the hotel. He rapped on the door. Come in. It wasn't the detective who called come in. The detective lay on the floor, stunned by a blow. Tabor's crony, named Randy, stood outside with his head and shoulders through the window. He held a gun pointed at the unconscious detective. Come on in. The door isn't locked. Dave Farnham knew a frame-up when he saw one. He turned and rushed from the hotel. A minute later, he was home. Jim, I gotta get out of town fast. Dad, what's the matter? Did you see Brackett? I gotta get a few things and clear out. I rapped on the door of Brackett's room. Someone told me to come in. As I opened the door, there was a shot. Gun was tossed into the room beside Brackett. He was flat on the floor. Didn't you see who fired the shot? I didn't get a good look. He fired and started away before the door was open wide. Someone tried to frame me for the detective's murder. Jim remained in town after his father disappeared. He parried countless questions and became increasingly bitter when he heard everyone blaming David for the murder of the detective. It was four days after the killing when the Lone Ranger and Tonto were halted beside a spring in a valley near town. They tensed at the sound of approaching hoofbeats. Over there, Toto. A horse just came around the bend. Ah, Matt on a ride too fast. This broken ground. He seems to be riding for his life. He's looking back. Look, other horses come round bend. A score or more. Them try shoot fella ahead. He's so busy looking back, he hasn't seen us. Horse, plenty tired. Toto, I don't like those odds. I'm going to help that fellow. Maybe him crook. Maybe law chase him. He's a crook. We can turn him in. If he's not, we'll be glad we helped him. Toto, meet me in our last camp. Said a big fellow. One, two, three. It was Jim Farnham who rode ahead of 20 townsmen. His horse was tiring fast. He knew it was a matter of minutes before he'd be overtaken. Then he suddenly became aware of a masked man who dashed toward him on a powerful white stallion. Here. The masked man turned fast and rode alongside, shouting, I'll help you. Take you on my horse. We'll outrun them. Jim decided that anything was better than capture. He leaned far to the side and slipped his feet from the stirrups as the rider of the white horse gripped him around the waist. Now. An instant later, he was riding double with the Lone Ranger. Now we'll outrun them. One, two, three. An 
hour later, Jim found himself in a small camp where an Indian was waiting. Oh, sir. Oh, sir. Long time getting here, Kimasabi. Uh, we circled wide to be sure we'd shaken off those others, Tonto. Instead of you, big fella. Now we'll find out why this young fellow was running away. Just who are you and where do you stand? I'll ask the questions. Who are you? My name is Jim Farnham. The law was chasing me because I shot a man who needed shooting. Farnham? David Farnham's son? You know my dad? I... I did before he went away. Maybe you're the owl hoot who framed him. Oh, no, Jim. And I'm not an owl hoot. Where's your father now? I'm not saying. He had to clear out because he was framed for the shooting of a detective. You said you had shot a man. I shot a sneaking polecat who was trying to stir up a lynch mob to go hunting for Dad. He called Dad some ugly names. I called him a liar. He pulled a gun. We both shot. He missed, and I didn't. Then you had to run. I'm labeled a killer's son. Tell me about your dad, Jim. Why should I? I saved you from those men. I've got to decide whether to keep you safe or turn you over to the law. You, a masked man helping the law? Strange, Jim, but nonetheless true. Now, start talking. I, I guess I owe you that much. Dad's trouble started 15 years ago when there was a big robbery in San Jim told his story to the interested masked man. He finished with the escape from town, a jump ahead of angry horsemen. I knew I wouldn't have a chance if I went on trial for shooting Dolan, so I lit out. Did you kill Dolan? No, I just winged him. Jim, how did your father know that the detective Brackett was in town? Frank Tabor told him. Tabor? He's in the real estate business. He's about the only friend we had in Center City. He staked Dad to $1,000 so as he could make a fresh start. I see... You uh, trust him? Oh, sure I do. He'd help me right now if I could get word to him. We'll get word to him. I'll write a note. Toto. Uh-huh. Ride into town and give this note to Frank Tabor. Be sure no one else sees it. Oh, uh, me savvy. When you've delivered it, stay in town and learn what you can about public opinion. While you're at it, uh, find out how badly a man named Dolan was injured. Oh, here's the note. I'll wrap it around a silver bullet. But a silver bullet? Yes, Jim. Well, you... You call the Indian Tonto. And Silver, your horse. Hey, now I get it. You're the Lone Ranger. Easy, Scout, easy. Get him up, Scout. Later that day, after Tonto had delivered the note, Frank Tabor met with a group of hard-faced men in his office. So you let the boy escape. Even with Townsman to help, you couldn't catch him. We told you, boss. He met a man with a horse like Lightning. And you haven't been able to find hiding her hair of Dave, huh? Jail made Farnham smart, boss. He smelled a frame up in Brackett's room. He didn't waste time... All right, Randy, never mind the excuses. I just had a piece of good luck to offset all your failures. I found out where the boy's hiding. Yeah? He's up in the hills with a certain man who owns a uh, white horse. A horse as fast as lightning. Here's the note I received, and here's the silver bullet that was wrapped in the note. That means the Lone Ranger. That's the fellow. Uh, How many of you men would like to take a shot at the Lone Ranger? That's what I thought. Well, boys, this note tells you where to find both Jim Farnham and the Lone Ranger. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
to continue our story. After listening to Jim Farnham, the Lone Ranger sent Toto to deliver a message to Frank Tabor. Both Jim and his father counted Tabor as a friend. Neither suspected that Tabor was actually a deadly enemy. With you and Frank Tabor to help me and Dad, I, I'm beginning to have some hope of getting the truth brought out. There's a lot to be done before that will happen, Jim. As I tighten this cinch, we're moving. We'll leave our camping gear right here. You say we're moving? Yes. Yeah, but you sent Tonner to, to tell Mr. Tabor to come here and meet us. He'll meet us if he comes alone. Oh, why shouldn't he come alone? We'll hope that he does. But we're going to take no chances on an ambush. Where are we going? We're going to take Silver and move back away from this camp. We can hide behind those rocks over there until we're sure that Tabor comes alone. What about Tonto? Maybe you'll come with Tabor. No, Tonto's going to stay in town and learn what he can. Now, let's get back. Jim and the masked man waited in hiding for over an hour. Jim thought no one was coming, but the Lone Ranger had seen movement in the underbrush. Look, Jim, right over there where I'm pointing. Hey, someone is sneaking up on your camp. Now look to the left. There's another man. Sure enough, two of them. And there's another. That's Tabor. He didn't come alone. He brought men with him. Quiet now. Not a word. Just listen. Well, no need to go any closer, boys. The camp is deserted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a fine. How do you do it? After we spent all this time sneaking up, we find there's no one here. Yeah. What's the next move, Tabor? Yeah. Well, listen, boys. We've got to round up Jim and his father in some way, even if we don't get the Lone Ranger. Well, I've got an idea, but I can't go with you fellas. Why not, Tabor? What are you afraid of? It's just that I can't take any chances, Randy. Remember, I'm supposed to be a friend of Farnham's. Well, uh, what's the idea? Let's get back to the horses, and I'll tell you. All right. Why, that dirty double-crossing polecat. I'd like to put a bullet in his back. Easy, Jim. But that was Frank Tabor talking. Yes, I know. Forget him for the present. Our next move is to find your father. Yeah, the sooner the better. I've got to tell Dad what we've learned before he tries to get in touch with Tabor. Do you know where your father's hiding? Yeah, I do. He's about a mile from here to Shack in the Hills. We can wait, get there. Wait, wait. We've got to stay here until Tabor and his friends ride away. Well, I wish they'd hurry. Tabor and the others stood next to the horses, ready to mount as soon as they had finished talking. You know where that shack is, Randy? I can find it, boss. What makes you think old Farnham will be there? It's just a chance. I remember him using that place a long time ago. He may use it again. Go and find out. We'll see you in town, huh, boss? Yeah. Get him, boy. Get him, get him, get him. Get him. Get him. Get him. From their place of concealment, the Lone Ranger and Jim watched Tabor and the others ride away, then waited for a quarter of an hour before venturing into the open. Come on, There's the shack. That's where I was heading when you pulled me out of my saddle. You never made it, Jim. I guess I wouldn't. That posse was closing in fast. Well, here we are. Ah, looks like I was wrong. Dad's not here. You weren't wrong, Jim. Huh? Look at the ceiling of this room. There's dust falling through the wide cracks between the boards. Oh, yeah. Your father must have gone up into the loft. For a moment, the Lone Ranger stood motionless his eyes fixed on the wide planks that made a ceiling to the room and a floor to the loft. Then he looked toward a ladder that led to an opening about three feet square. He saw a shadowy form in the darkness of the loft. He thought he saw a gun up here, but for a moment he couldn't be sure. Dad. Daddy, up there? It's all right, Dad. Come on down. This man with me is the... Look out! You up there. Throw down your gun and be quick about it. Come down that ladder. I can see you. Don't shoot. Don't shoot again. I'm coming. Jim, are you badly hurt? Uh, not much. I, I just got my side brushed. I'd be dead if you hadn't given me a push. Don't shoot me. You started the shooting. Who are you? As far as you're concerned, Jim Farnham, I represent the law. You and your mass friend can't get away with shooting me. You don't represent the law. You represent Frank Tabor. 
We saw you with him less than an hour ago. You saw me? You and the others were trying to sneak up and ambush Jim. What were you doing here? We came here to get your father. What's more, Jim Farnham, we got him. You killed him the way you tried to kill me. No, let me go. My arm. What did you do to Dad? Answer me. He's not hurt. He's not hurt, I tell you. He was captured. Let me go. Take it easy, Jim. Let the man go and stand back. Dirty dry go. Oh, oh. How long ago did your pals leave here with Farnham? I tell Answer you. me. All right, all right. It was just 10 or 15 minutes ago. And I can catch them before they reach town. How many are with him? Three men. Thanks. Now we'll see about that wound and your wound as well, Jim. But what about Dad? Leave that to me. I want you to stay right here and see if this man doesn't get away. After dressing the wounds, the Lone Ranger rode along the trail toward Center City until he saw a group of horsemen far ahead. Drawing closer, he saw that one of the four men had his hands tied behind his back and reasoned that this must be Jim's father, David Farnham. Urging the great horse Silver to greater speed, the masked man cut to the left and headed to the higher ground in the hills where he could pass Frank Tabor's friends without being seen by them. When he had reached a place on the mountainside that overlooked the trail ahead of Farnham and his captors, he drew Silver to a halt and dismounted. Oh, no, oh easy, Silver. Come on, please. The men with Farnham rode on silently for several minutes, wholly unaware that a masked man and his big white stallion were concealed behind huge rocks on the hillside just ahead. They were taken by surprise when a gun barked. Hey, look at ho, 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 ho. You men down there, unbuckle your guns. Let them drop to the ground. Hey, hey jump in those it. rocks. <laughs> Hurry. I can shoot closer if necessary. All right, All right I'm tough. Man. Farnham, you stand fast. The rest of you spur your horses toward town. David Farnham remained in the saddle and held his horse on the trail. After the others moved away toward town, he saw a masked man appear from behind the rocks on a snow-white stallion. Who are you, mister? What does that mask mean? Farnham, your son knows I'm a friend. Frank Tabor sent you? No, Frank Tabor sent those others. I'm going to take you to your son. He's waiting at the cabin where you were found. I'll untie your hand before we start. That night, Frank Tabor remained in his office later than usual, listening to the unsatisfactory report of his men. He was disappointed and angry when he went home, entered his house, and lighted a lamp. One of these days, I'm going to find a couple of servants who will see that the lamps are lighted. Hey, who's here? It's me, Frank. David. They found him. How in the name? You, uh, you gave me quite a start. I've been worrying about you, David. I heard that you were captured and got away. Yes, some men learned about my hideout. I... I figured I'd better come here to your house where I could be safe and maybe get some food. Sure thing, David. You came to the right place. Yeah, you've sure got a nice place, Frank. Yes, sirree. Seems now I remember right after I went to prison, my wife wrote and told me how well you were doing, how you'd bought up a lot of land and property, including the hotel. Yes, sirree, you sure have done all right. What are you driving at, David? Me? I was just thinking out loud, Frank. Thinking about how fast you got rich after I left town. Charged with stealing government money. Before that, you didn't have a dime, did you? See here, Farnham. You're getting at something. Maybe I am. Maybe I finally put two and two together. And realized that there's just one man in a position to frame me for that robbery. I never suspected that man because I thought he was too good a friend. But today, when those men found me in my hideout... A place that no one but you and Jim knew about. What about it? Hey, why are you pulling a gun on me? I don't mean to make any trouble. No, Farnham. You're not going to make any trouble. Not for me or anyone else. You wouldn't shoot me. There's a nice reward for you. It'll be paid whether you're dead or alive. So that's it. I was right. You did steal that cash 15 years ago and you did frame me. I suppose you killed that detective Brackett, too. I had it done, Farnham. You wouldn't have had the nerve to shoot him yourself. I suppose it was your right-hand man, that fellow called Randy, that did the shooting. That's right, David, that's right. But I won't have to call him in to deal with you. 
I'll do that myself here and now. Fire what? that gun, Tabor, and I'll kill you. What the? You're through. Sheriff. The sheriff heard everything, you double-crossing crook. Well, you trick me. Well, I'll show both of you. Oh. You see, I'm not here alone. Do you want some more gunplay, Tabor? You, that, that mask. Sheriff, this man's an outlaw. He's a crook. He's masked. He shot me. He broke my arm. He's identified himself as far as I'm concerned, Tabor. He came to my office a little while ago, bringing both David Farnham and his son, and asking me to leave them out of jail long enough to see if we could get some true facts out of you. And we got them. Dave, you pick up Frank Tabor's gun. Yes. You, Jim, you can come in here now. Dad, it worked. Jim Farnham. Jeff, he's one of shooting Dolan. You've got to arrest Don't him. Don't tell me what I've got to do, Tabor. Dolan asked for what he got. Besides, he wasn't hurt much. Jim, you can help me and your pa take care of Tabor. We'll have to take him to the doctor. All right, Sheriff. You can stay with him while we pick up Randy. Right. <laughs> yeah, I reckon with Randy and Tabor held for the murder of that detective, one of the two will jump at the chance to turn state's evidence and tell where the rest of the stolen money is hidden. Hey, hey, wait a minute. What's that, Jim? But that mask man, he's leaving. Oh, Tonto's waiting. You won't need me anymore, Jim. Adios. Adios, mister. That masked man, if he hadn't shot me... You're not the only one who learned about gunplay from him. He outshot that man you left to ambush me in the shack today. That's right, Tabor. <laughs> yeah, well, the doc will be just about finishing patching Jackson up and time to go to work on you. <laughs> you see, it's downright foolish to match guns with the Lone Ranger. I don't do that. This is a feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated, created and produced by George W. Trendle and directed by Charles D. Livingston. Tonight's story was written by Fran Stryker. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Mm -hmm.